Hello and welcome to final lesson of our Shopify GA4 crash course. In this video, I will walk you through e-commerce reports in GA4. We have talked in the previous lessons how we can integrate with the GA4, what the events are, we did some troubleshooting, we also talked about the migration. So if you haven't checked those videos, make sure to check those first because otherwise the reports in this video will not work for you or will include wrong data. And now we will go into GA4 accounts and I will walk you through some important e-commerce reports one by one. So what will be them? First we will we will do a general walkthrough and then I will show you product, category and brand, brand performance reports. You can see the your product performances from GA standpoint. Of course, you know the revenue, you know how many of those products you have sold, but GA4 always can show you more than you would think. Maybe you have some products that receive so much views, so much engagements, but not enough purchases. So this would give you some important insights at the product level, category level, or brand level. And then we will check the campaigns, campaign level behavior reports. For instance, you could filter the whole GA4 for a specific performance max campaign. You could say that now show me all reports only for this campaign. We will be doing that. I think it will be pretty important and useful. We will check the user journey and e-commerce funnels. We will do some tech and geographic overview, which means we will break down the users like the mobile users or the some specific region, some specific country. And then we will build some custom reports using the explore section. We will build some reports that, that are not available in the standard reports. Lastly, we will also quickly look at segments and audiences. So without further ado, let's get started. For the sake of this video, I will be using Google Analytics for demo account, which Google provides. Um, if you also don't have a GA4 account to work with me, then you can also use the same account. Just Google GA4 demo account, then click this link. Here you will see access the demo account. Click that again. And then at the top you will see GA4 property, merchandise store, web data. Let's click that. That will open the demo GA4 property that Google created for you. And this is the dashboard of GA4. It shows you the last reports that you visited some real-time data, users in the last 30 minutes, and some obvious metrics to start with. But now I want to start with e-commerce metrics immediately. I'll just click reports on the left-hand side. You might be seeing a different sidebar because now this sidebar is completely customizable. And in our next course, I will also show you how you can create your own menu on the left for the metrics that you care. This is really powerful. So make sure to subscribe to our channel and also subscribe to our upcoming course. Uh, I will leave the link below in the description. And now let's continue. Here I want to click monetization and e-commerce purchases. This will show a table by item name. We will see items viewed, add to cart, purchased, and the revenue. And here we, we see it by item name. So we can change it for item ID, also known as SKU, category, category two, if your store has. In Shopify, this category should be the collection, obviously, and then the item ID should be the SKU. If you are not seeing these reports on your property, that means that there is a problem with your integration. Your integration might not be sending this specific data. In the second lesson on the integration chapter, we deep dive into this topic, but now I will continue with the reports. Now we see this SKU, weaved, add to cart, item purchased, etc. This could be helpful in some cases, but now I will continue to category and it works quite well. So now let's go to engagement and landing page. I really like this report because this report will show you the, the first page that users landed in, the performance of that. Of course, the users might be coming from ads, organic, or uh, some email campaigns. They might be coming from different places. But of course, always the landing page is important to know to track the performance. So when you check the landing page, you will always see here not set and empty, which were not clearly defined by analytics, but then you will see the correct landing pages. In this example, there are some collection category pages, and then we can check the performance of those. So here you can see the landing page on the left column and then the revenue on the right column. So for example, what we can understand from here is that there are 9,000 users came into this landing page, but only seven, 
only 78 USD is generated as a revenue. So this is pretty low compared to the number. And then as you can see here, the bottom one received less users, but generated more revenue. So this might be a good insight to go after. You could see this report, this exact report, at the campaign level as well. For instance, you are running Performance Max campaigns. And you know Performance Max is kind of a black box, so Google doesn't give you all the details about the campaign. But what you can do in Google Analytics, you can create a comparison here. Let's do it. Click Comparison. And then we need to set some dimension here. Dimension, we will put first user, source, and medium. Then here there will be some options. I will choose Google CPC. For those who doesn't know what dimension is, dimension is usually the first column of the table and the metrics are the numbers. So dimensions, you could think more of dimensions as definitions and the metrics as the numbers. For example, in this table, dimension is the landing page and the metrics are new users, average engagement time, revenue, etc. What we want to do now, we want to create a comparison table and our dimension is Google CPC. We could also tell that I want this specific campaign. Let's say this specific campaign. I could even choose a couple different campaigns. Obviously, as these campaigns are already CPC campaigns, this dimension lost the meaning, so I'll delete that. So now, if I apply analytics report, this analytics report will be converted into two sections. First, all users, and then the comparison dimension that I chose. As you can see here, the report got a little bit messed up because I added so much data, but still, as you can see here, all users, 46,000 users. These campaigns that I chose, 12,000. All users, average engagement time 1.15 and these one, etc. Let's continue and you can see the revenue is quite low. And now if I just go ahead and delete this, now the table will be much more simple because it will only show that filter. So now I see those campaigns, which landing page they bring the most visits to. For example, what you can understand from here is that Let's say this campaign brought 7,000 clicks, 7,000 users to this specific landing page, but generated zero dollars. So this is pretty much a red alert, right? If you spend that much money, then you expect to generate some revenue here. So this is really a good way of analyzing your landing page performances, analyzing your campaigns. You can do this at the campaign level, or you can do this at the source level. You could choose Facebook, and then you could choose Google Ads, etc. So this you can do to every report, not only the landing page report. For example, if you come into, uh, let's say you went to monetization overview, you just want to check these normal numbers, normal metrics. Then you could apply the same. As you can see here, that filter that I have applied earlier follows me. Now all the reports I check comes with that filter. Now I will cancel that. Of course, you just apply this to your specific use case. Um, I will cancel this. That will automatically bring all users back to me. There are actually many other reports that I can show you now, but of course we have a limited time because this is a crash course. What I recommend you though is just Google Shopify GA4 guidebook, find our article, and in this article, I have some section called GA4 e-commerce reports. And here, there are some small videos and uh, many other reports that uh, we included. So you can also get to know how uh, GA4 reports work here. Um, different reports than I'm showing you now. Let's just go back to GA4 and now let's check acquisition, traffic acquisition. This will show how the traffic comes in. In the in Universal Analytics, this report was named as source and medium. It's very similar. Here now we have the default channel group. I'll just convert it to source and medium. And as you know, Google CPC is Google cost per click. Then we have Google Organic. We always have some good amount of direct and then we have some not set as, and so on. In your case, you will see some campaigns here. 
If you are seeing a lot of referrals, then check the previous video where I show you the referral exclusion settings because you might have something wrong because you it's not natural that you have so much referrals. If you are seeing a lot of undefined Facebook traffic here because Facebook should also show something like of course in demo account Google doesn't show us some Facebook traffic but in your case it should be some Facebook referral, Facebook CPC, Facebook organic. If you see a report that doesn't help you understand the Facebook data then you must have the UTMs wrongly set up. I have a different video explaining the UTMs. Just watch that video. Uh, I will link around somewhere here and make sure that you have the UTMs correctly set so that these reports will make more sense. So this is the traffic accusation report. Now we see the user session revenue and those things about this. In every report here you should have an edit option on your own account. Now I don't have because this is Google Ads, Google's demo account so I cannot show you that unfortunately. And in the edit screen you can also change the columns, this layout. GA4 is so much editable. We will also be talking a lot about this editable screens. Now let's go and check some user attributes and then click overview. Here you will see users by country, city, gender, interest, age and language. As you can see here, each of them are clickable. You can click and go ahead. If you don't have these numbers well, that means maybe you did not turn on Google signals. You can see that again in our previous video, in GA4 settings video, because this most of this data comes from Google signals. Now let's check by city. Now you can view your performance by city. Again, average engagement rate, event count, conversions. Here it's written all events. You could just choose purchase. You would see the purchase. Again, total revenue. Sometimes you will see interesting things here. In this case, for instance, in this demo account, New York got good amount of revenue. But here, as you can see, Toronto did not get. Maybe if you are running ads to the wrong cities, some cities will perform much better than the others. So again, it's good to check this at the every level, city level, country level, language level, age level, gender level. Check your website performance in every level, especially after you put a filter at the top, just like we did before for the paid campaigns, because imagine for the paid campaigns, you pretty much pay for every click. You don't want to pay for the ones that doesn't convert well. You could put a paid filter. Let's just do it. Let's add comparison, dimension, source and medium again. I'll choose Google CPC, apply, and then I'll delete this all users. Let's close it up. And then let's see. Of course, this Google's demo data doesn't make sense much, but in your case, maybe you will have a lot more data, which will make more sense. Then you can make better decisions. For instance, now, as you can see, we paid 3,800 users from Toronto to come to our website, but we generated only $32 from them. On the other hand, for Los Angeles, we paid way less, like three times, four times less users, but then we generated 10 times more revenue. So obviously, ads in Los Angeles perform much better than ads in Toronto. This logic is applicable to almost to every report here. Cities, countries, language, landing pages, etc. So always try to do this. This is very useful. And now let's go into tech, tech overview. Let's keep it as CPC. Here we have mobile, desktop and tablet. Let's click. Obviously, there will be some slight differences between the platforms. Mobile might, mobile might have a lower conversion rate or desktop might have a higher conversion rate. What matters here usually is that when you check by technology, by tech details, let me remove this filter now. You might want to check the engagement metrics because if some of the engagement metric is slightly different than the others, then maybe your website has a problem about that device. Let's say tablet. Tablet average engagement time is 42 seconds and mobile is 1 minute and 11 seconds. Tablet seems quite low to me. Maybe just check your website in tablet. Maybe you have some UI UX issues, responsiveness issues. You don't want to have it. So just to make, just to make sure, check in all devices here. And of course, it's not only the devices. It's also screen resolutions, platform, operation system, 
operation system version, operating system at all, browser, each of them can have this kind of issues. Maybe your website doesn't work well in Edge browser, then you might want to know it and then you might want to check it and fix it. That's how we use these tech reports usually to detect problems on our website if there are. Of course, there is a lot more I can cover. I can show you maybe 20, 30 different reports, but we have limited time. So now I just want to go into explore section and I want to show you how the explore section works. Let's open a blank canvas. This simply gives us a blank page in which we can create our own report. Again, we will add dimensions and metrics, but I will add, I will add transaction ID. Let's import. And then as a metric, I will add transactions. Some of them you will see grayed out here. Um, that means that this metric is not compatible with the dimension that we have added earlier, but transactions is compatible. I'll click import. As you can see, our table is still empty because they are on the left hand side only. So we made them available, but we didn't add them. If I double click here and here, now the table is coming up. As you can see here, now we have our transaction IDs. Let's now check for each transaction, their resource, where they came from and the revenue. Let's add revenue, e-commerce revenue. Let's add it to the table. Perfect. And you see, okay, this is pretty a good, this is really a good sale. I'm now curious. I'm now, I now want to know where this sale came from. So I want to know the source. Let's just add another dimension and say source. As you can see, first user source medium and session source medium. These are two different things. When you mouse over, you can understand the difference. This will show the first source of this purchase. So if the user came from another campaign, then purchased on another campaign, then this will show the first campaign and the session source will show the second campaign. Now let's choose this one and then again, double click. Now we will have the second layout here. And now we know that that purchase came from direct. Unfortunately, we don't know the source, but that was a good try though. So now, if you are curious, you could right click, click view users, which I cannot do now because Google doesn't allow me in this demo report. Then you could even go in depth of this user's exact journey, which page they land, which campaign they came, which events they did, which products they visited. The full journey of this specific user is actually available in GA4. And you can do this for every transaction or for every user. You just need to know where to look at. Now I showed you something else. And we can save this report, transaction ID by source. Once you save a report, that report will be saved on the explore section. This will only be visible to you. If you want to share this with your colleagues, then you could click here, share, and then it will be shared with your colleagues as well. I now want to show you the user journey. Here we have something called user purchase journey. This is a closed funnel, but still it's useful. What closed funnel means is that, as you can see here, there is a funnel here. Session starts, user view the product, add it to cart, begin checkout and purchase. Now I want to show you user purchase journey. And this is a default standard um, e-commerce funnel. If you click here, you will see the funnel steps defined by uh, GA4. You can define your own funnel. Let's say you are driving a traffic to a specific landing page. You could put that as a first step of the funnel and then continue and track down. Funnels are pretty customizable, but this is the standard one. And here you see the funnels performance by device. But again, you can do this by language, by browser, by city, by different dimensions so that you see which group of people are dropping off in which section. You could create custom funnels in the user explore section. Here we have funnel exploration section. Um, in our upcoming complete GA4 course, we will deep dive into funnels as well. 
make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss that update. Now, last but not least, I will show you segments and audiences quickly. When we click admin, then here we have the audiences. Here there are uh, predefined audiences on your account maybe. And also on our lesson 2, we imported some audiences from the universal analytics. But in GA4, the audience builder is quite powerful. You can create any sort of audience. You could create an audience who watched a video of yours, who added to cart, who added a specific product to the cart, who completed a purchase above or below some, some event value. So sky is the limit about the audiences. Depending on your business goals, you can create different audiences. These audiences will be collected. Let's say you are selling bikinis for women and hats for men, and you are running ads to both. Then you could simply create two different audiences. You could say bikinis and hats. Then you could set these landing pages. By the time you are running ads, these audiences will be collected data. As you can see here, the number of users is visible. For example, this audience has 15,000. This audience, this segment has 2,000. Then you can import these audiences to Google Ads. You can run ads on these audiences. You can make specific bits. And more importantly, you can customize your reports within GA4 according to these audiences. So that's all from me now. We will cover many more reports and settings in the GA4 on our upcoming course. I hope this crash course was useful for you. Please let us know in the comments if it was useful, which part was the best, which part was the worst, where did you get confused, what would you like to learn more. If you contribute to these courses and resources that we create for Shopify community, we promise we will do better by the time with your feedback. For instance, this course, many sections of this course came through your feedbacks, your questions or your comments to us. And also in our content hub, analyzify.com slash hub, we have lots of useful tutorials. Last but not least, if you are looking for a professional solution, professional data analytics solution, Analyzify is here for you. Our app does the data collection part. We offer turnkey seamless integrations with Google Tag Manager, GA4, Google Ads, Bing Ads and more. And also within our app, we have a troubleshooting system which detects the store level tracking problems on your store as they occur and notify you and us as well. We offer hands-on support. We fix the problems if you have. We have a generous support scope. We help you with store level problems as well as finding your way around GA4 in case you need help. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching until now and hope to see you in our upcoming complete Shopify GA4 course.